Pau Gasol was just recently inducted into the Hall of Fame. Despite Pau getting this incredible recognition, I believe he's one of many great players who are criminally underrated. A lot of fans forget that Pau was legitimately a great player throughout the 2000s. He made six all-star teams, four all-NBA teams, and he's a two-time champion. Early in his career, he was a star player that brought the Grizzlies to three playoff appearances, and the Lakers trade for Pau in 2008, saved them from obscurity, and helped them to become world champions again. This video will break down why Pau is not only a Hall of Famer, but an all-time great player. Pau Gasol was the number three overall pick in the 2001 draft. With the third pick in the 2001 draft, the Atlanta Hawks select Pau Gasol from FC Barcelona, Spain. He was originally drafted by the Hawks, but was traded to the Grizzlies on draft night. It didn't take long for Gasol to have a big impact. He averaged 17 points, 9 boards, and over 2 blocks per game his first year, and took home Rookie of the Year honors. Garnett's wanting to go. <laughs> there he goes. Oh! By his third year, Gasol had already led the Grizzlies to the playoffs, but he didn't make the All-Star team until his fifth season. Gasol had established himself as one of the very best big men in basketball early in his career, but the competition to make the All-Star team in the West was tough, with other great power forwards like Tim Duncan, Kevin Garnett, Dirk Nowitzki, and Amari Stoudemire. Gasol finally made the All-Star team in 2006, becoming the Memphis Grizzlies' first All-Star in their franchise history. In 2007, he had his best statistical year in the association, averaging just under 21 points, 10 boards, 3 assists, and 2 blocks per game. So what made Pau Gasol such a dominant player? A huge part of Powell's excellence was his ability to score in the post. He had great touch around the basket and good footwork down low. Powell had a beautiful hook shot he liked to go to, and he could shoot these with either hand. He also had a good fadeaway, and with his high release point at seven foot one, this was a difficult shot for most defenders to stop. Instead of backing down defenders, oftentimes Powell would immediately attack off the catch. He had a really nice spin move in the post, turning around once he caught the entry pass for the finish at the rim. The bulk of Powell's scoring came from inside the paint, but he also did a lot of damage from the mid-range, and his jump shot was automatic. In the 2006-07 season, Powell shot 52% from 10 to 14 feet and 47% from 15 to 19 feet. And if the defender got too close to take away his jumper, Powell could take them off the dribble and finish strong at the rim. His dominance on the inside led to him getting hacked a lot and sent to the free throw line, and he was a good free throw shooter for a big man, shooting 75% from the free throw line for his career. Powell was an excellent scorer, but he was also a very good passer. He tended to draw a lot of double teams and he delivered passes right on target, giving his teammates great opportunities to score. He also had amazing court vision and was very aware of open teammates, often finding cutters in the post. That's the only thing we're talking about. Look at Gasol that. behind his back. Over the Those elite passing instincts made Gasol such a tough cover because he was extremely difficult to defend in single coverage but he could also punish teams that sent help defense by finding his open teammates and racking up assists. Gasol's elite offensive production allowed him to consistently lead the Grizzlies to winning seasons in a loaded Western Conference. Powell got the Grizzlies to three playoff appearances, but he was swept in each of them. While it looks bad to lose every game in three playoff appearances, he had a pretty underwhelming supporting cast and had to go up against three legitimately great teams between the defending champion Spurs in 2004, the Steve Nash-led Suns who had the best record in the NBA in 2005, and the 62-win Mavs led by Dirk. Powell played well in each of those playoff series, but he simply didn't get enough help from his teammates going up against far superior teams. In the 2007-2008 season, Pau Gasol would get traded from the Grizzlies to the Lakers, which would have major implications on both Gasol's career and the Lakers franchise. Despite Gasol's dominance, the Grizzlies were struggling to compete in the West, 
and the Grizzlies front office was ready to trade Powell and start a fresh new rebuild. The Lakers were also in a state of turmoil. After trading Shaq to the Miami Heat, the Lakers were stuck in mediocrity despite Kobe's otherworldly production on the court. In 2005, the Lakers missed the playoffs, and in 2006 and 2007, the Lakers suffered first round exits to the Phoenix Suns. Frustrated with the Lakers' futility, Kobe publicly demanded a trade in 2007, with his preferred choice being the Chicago Bulls. With the losses mounting, it looked like the Lakers were going to lose Kobe, but they held on to him despite his trade request. In the middle of the 2007 to 2008 season, the Lakers had a good record of 29 and 16, but despite the strong start, the Lakers still appeared as a one-man show and an inevitable first-round exit come playoff time. But near the NBA trade deadline, the Lakers acquired Pau Gasol from the Memphis Grizzlies. Trading for the All-Star big man allowed the Lakers to finally get a co-star next to the Black Mamba. Gasol tries to pump fake, left hand, oh, oh, and he oh. jams it which transformed the Lakers from a middle-of-the-pack team in the Western Conference to a legit title contender. And it didn't take long for Powell to make a big impact on the Lakers, dropping 24 points and 12 rebounds in a 105-90 win to the New Jersey Nets during his debut. Powell Gasol kept up that excellent production in the playoffs that year, dropping an absurd 36 points, 16 rebounds, 8 assists, and three blocks in the Lakers' opening game of the playoffs against the Denver Nuggets. The Lakers would go on to sweep the Nuggets, and Powell was pivotal throughout that playoff run as they made it all the way to the finals. But the Lakers lost to the Celtics with Powell getting badly outplayed by Kevin Garnett in that series. Powell averaged just 14 points per game in the finals as the Lakers lost to the Celtics in six games. He was labeled soft the way he underperformed against Kevin Garnett, but Powell used the stinking defeat as motivation. The very next season, Powell Gasol was a major part of the Lakers winning 65 games and getting the one seed in the Western Conference. Kobe was still clearly the top player on the team, but many nights, Powell was the best player. He was named the Western Conference Player of the Month after helping the Lakers to an 11-2 record in February. Powell's elite production also earned him his second All-Star appearance of his career that season. Once again, Pau Gasol was brilliant throughout the Lakers' 2009 championship run. Not only was he excellent as the Lakers stormed through the Western Conference, but in the 2009 Finals, he was a big part of the Lakers beating the Magic in just five games. Kobe was the well-deserved Finals MVP, but Pau Gasol helped to limit the Magic's best player, Dwight Howard, to just 15 points per game down from the 20 points per game he averaged in his 2009 Finals run. Pau Gasol also outscored Dwight in the Finals, averaging 18 points per game in that series on an absurd 60% shooting. Gasol then won his first championship ring and helped Kobe to win his first ring without Shaq. The next season, Pau Gasol continued his dominance. He was an all-star again in 2010, and he played great throughout the Lakers' second consecutive championship run. In Game 6 of the Lakers' first round matchup against the Thunder, he not only grabbed 18 boards, but he had a game-winning putback to help the Lakers close out OKC and advance to the second round. You cannot leave him one-on-one. -on -one. Brian for the lead. Misses Gasol. Thanks it in. The round. In the Lakers' second round series against the Utah Jazz, he badly outplayed Carlos Boozer, averaging 23 points and 14 boards a game as the Lakers swept the Jazz, and he kept up that dominance in the conference finals, averaging 20 points and 7 boards per game as the Lakers beat the Steve Nash led Suns in a tough 6 games. In the finals, he had a career defining series against the Boston Celtics. Powell was humiliated by KG in the 2008 finals, but this time, he got sweet revenge by outplaying Garnett in the 2010 finals. This time, Powell was way more physical down low and much more active on the glass. Powell put up incredible all-around numbers in that final series, averaging 18 points, 11 boards, 3 assists, and 2 blocks per game on 48% shooting. Game 7 was a major slugfest, with neither team shooting the ball well. Boston shot just 40%, LA was even worse at 32%. 
but what gave the Lakers the edge in the game was that they out-rebounded the Celtics and Powell was a big part of that, grabbing 18 boards to go along with 19 points, 4 assists, and 2 blocks. Nine of Pau Gasol's boards were offensive, which was more offensive rebounds than the entire Celtics team in Game 7, and all of those offensive boards gave the Lakers much needed extra possessions. Powell also delivered in the fourth quarter. In crunch time, this drop step over Rasheed Wallace gave the Lakers a 6 point lead with about 90 seconds left in the game. And Powell made arguably the biggest play of the series with this key offensive board with about 25 seconds left in the game. This key rebound essentially sealed the deal as the Lakers beat the Celtics and won the 2010 NBA championship. Kobe ended up winning the finals MVP, but the way Pau Gasol dominated the 2010 finals, he was just as deserving of the finals MVP award as Kobe in my opinion. Pau's contributions to the Lakers' two championship runs is ultimately what made him a Hall of Famer. He not only put up great numbers as a six-time All-Star, but he proved to be incredibly mentally tough and a winner at the highest level. He saved the Lakers franchise from mediocrity in the post shaq era and helped restore them to glory. This is why along with getting inducted into the Hall of Fame, the Lakers also retired Pau Gasol's jersey. For these reasons, Pau should not only be recognized as a Hall of Famer, but as one of the NBA's all-time great players. But what do you think of Pau Gasol's NBA career? Let me hear your thoughts down below in the comment section. Guys, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more dope content just like it, please drop a like on the video and hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day.